So welcome to another session of um, Data Legends. I think there has been some kind of uh, glitch in LinkedIn. So we are back to Zoom. I think um, this is where we will be in future also. So you can start um, joining in Zoom. Uh, so it's, it's another evening. That's an exciting evening that I'm welcoming you all. Uh, so I think people are joining it, but nevertheless, I would want to start and then people can join, join in one by one. And I think we can do a recap later if someone has any questions on that. Uh, so today is a very specific uh, topic that we have selected. Uh, generally, we uh, go on to a, a broader topic in terms of goal setting, OKRs, employee engagement, performance management. Today, I really wanted to dwell deep in terms of um, a specific sector. Uh, the reason being uh, dwelling deep into that part particular sector is that we wanted to really build content and uh, knowledge around the domains that we have worked in, the success stories that we have had till date. Uh, so a very uh, special uh, reason uh, for uh, this particular webinar also, I have uh, my co-host in the session and also my co-founder. Dharma comes from a manufacturing background. And we've been having a lot of discussions and, you know, questions around it. And uh, uh, we quite often get uh, DMs or uh, queries in terms of uh, how do we set OKRs for, uh, you know, manufacturing sector. Um, these questions we wanted to answer. So we thought we'll take a forum and then answer these questions and address all the queries that we have in the recent past. That being said, um, said let me directly jump to the um, uh, webinar today uh, you would be uh, this particular webinar would be available in our website and also our podcast is available for you to uh, view it later or hear it later so this particular event that we do uh, which we do every month uh, one session uh, either uh, knowledge sharing or uh, fireside or talking to the leaders uh, understanding exactly what's going on current and trends and practices is for a community that we hold, which is a goals accomplished community. This community has more than 350 uh, individuals where uh, they are uh, CEOs, visionaries, and also strategists, uh, and also HR leaders as well. So uh, that is the kind of community that hold. We uh, wanted to actually bring that community in one place. So that's why uh, we uh, conduct webinars for them. And uh, let me, you know, kind of do a brief introduction for those who don't know me already. Uh, my name is Ramya Chandrasekharan. I'm one of the co-founders of Data Legends, and I come from a talent management portfolio. Uh, and uh, we've uh, been driving OKR, driving performance for organizations, and uh, worked in uh, frameworks like balance scorecards and ma ma management by objectives. So having said that, I would like to invite my uh, co-host, uh, who is uh, Dharma. Dharma comes from uh, 20 plus years of uh, manufacturing uh, background, business operations, strategy, and also supply chain. Uh, the, that's the very reason I wanted him to be part of this uh, particular webinar so that he can share his own experience with us as well. Hey, folks. Work with... Hi, Dharma. Good evening. Uh, Dharma has worked uh, oh. with companies like uh, Daimler and uh, Alstom, and he has also uh, been uh, a change uh, um, uh, grow, brought in a lot of change in terms of procurement and streamlining the procurement process also. He's also one of our uh, OKR coaches. Uh, he uh, handles our uh, practice in terms of OKR and also the product as well. So uh, that being said, and uh, I just wanted to, uh, now that you know who I am and who Dharma is, let me also introduce you uh, to uh, Data Legends, that's the company that we are talking about. Uh, Data Legends is an organization that helps organization to you know, kind of uh, set the goals and track the goals. We help them to uh, cascade it or a top down or a bottom up, help the alignments, bring the insights, create surveys and also performance reviews. A very holistic and um, you know, platform that can help you to measure org level and also people level performance. And uh, we very strongly believe that one size does not fit all. Uh, so we have built the product uh, in a very mo modular way that you can custom uh, design your own requirement and you, you can actually 
um, you know, fit it to your own design as well. And uh, um, now that you might be, many of you might be wondering, you know, what are we talking about? Um, you know, what is what are OKRs generally? You know, for people who already know, um, I'm happy uh, that I I can brush you again. And people who don't know already, probably let me give a, a glimpse on what OKRs are. OKRs are a very critical thinking framework, um, which helps an ongoing discipline. When I'm saying a critical thinking framework, it helps you to think in a, in a certain way that helps you to kind of look at what are your results are, what are your outcomes are, and what are the key metrics that supports you. And also uh, brings the uh, workforce or employees together uh, to you know, focus on their measurable contribution and all this are uh, helping you to move forward on an org level and also on a team level. That's what we call a, a, a talk about OKRs as a concept. And uh, for an example, a very uh, simple example to go, quote what, what I just said is that, say, for example, I'm a baker and I have a uh, store which is uh, in the city and then I want to be really popular in the town and, you know, uh, in the next six months. I've kept a goal that next six months that I'm going to be the one of the most popular bakery in the town. And then what would I do? I would actually ensure that, um, you know, I would get 100 customers at least to ensure that uh, compared to my competitors who have closely around 70, 80 customers. And I need to increase my sale by 20% and also increase it rating maybe an elf rating or a google rating or whatever um, uh, rating that you have uh, i want to achieve that rating but so it helps me to kind of aid uh, the goal that i'm actually trying to achieve so that's that's about okrs and uh, as simply put you know what are you trying to do is your objective and how we are going to achieve it is your key key result so that's the concept all about um, okrs and uh, uh, let me directly jump to um, why OKRs are, uh, or a goal setting methodology is very crucial in a manufacturing segment. Um, and the outcome that they look at, uh, you know, because uh, as a manufacturing, we look very, um, we are very serious in terms of uh, improving the efficiency and productivity and quality being key. And also cost uh, is one of the very prime factor uh, uh, as your raw materials are all involved there. And by doing all this thing, you should also be uh, constantly looking at your engagement and continuous improvement also. And the entire process has to be kind of integrated towards a data-driven process. So that helps you to make that decision. So uh, uh, with that, I, before I actually move on to a few few methodologies and uh, you know terms that terminologies that. Uh, manufacturing uh, segment users, maybe I would uh, invite Dharma to actually say a, a few words about uh, why your goal setting is very important. Uh, Dharma, would you want to add, uh, add something here? Uh, thanks, Ramya. Especially in manufacturing with my experience, uh, goal setting and uh, alignment becomes very crucial for reaching uh, uh, whatever you set for your own uh, standards and uh, whatever you commit for your customers and also for the management. Yes, the, the highlights are listed here. We can improve efficiency and productivity. Uh, we need to improve on uh, quality control and uh, this definitely helps us to enhance. And uh, most importantly, the, the most killing pressure on any manufacturing is reducing the cost. And we have achieved uh, cost reduction through uh, uh, the OKR management. And uh, we have uh, people working in silos and uh, increasing employee engagement becomes essential. And also continuous improvement is something uh, which every customer speaks every day. And uh, for a management, for a leader, data-driven decision making, making is the, uh, uh, what's called the keyword and we can achieve this through goal setting. That's all from my side, Ramya, go on. Thank you, thank you, Dharma. Uh, when I actually first met Dharma, we had a common ground uh, of discussing something similar to this. Probably I would want to walk you through in the, uh, you know, as we course of the session. You know, uh, most of you are from manufacturing industry, would understand the jargons that are terminologies that I'm talking here. Uh, so it is like, you know, when you talk about ocean canary as a methodology, right? I mean, uh, uh, the X matrix visualization. 
the KPIs that we track on day in and day out, you know, the TQM and TPM and KZ. I know these are all something that is there in our DNA and we speak about it on day in and day out. And how are we going to bring that kind of integration with what we are already doing without knowing that we are actually bringing in a framework that is going to ease out our process much more better than what we are currently doing. So that's what uh, we try to um, you know implement through OKRs blend in your current culture and uh, blend in your current practices and make your execution much stronger and powerful through a, a very simple uh, framework called uh, OKRs. Let me, you know, begin with a small story, uh, you know, um, of a great uh, tree uh, and the villagers who harvest it on a uh, yearly basis. There was a very um, a great tree. When you uh, call a great tree, what is so great about it? It used to give uh, you know fruits that are um, you know that are gold, right? I mean, so every year in the villages used to you know one fine day they used to come uh, come and then stay there, you know, wait for that particular harvest to happen. And they, it's a, there was a very hundred percent harmony. And there's no quarrels, nothing. They uniformly divided it uh, all to the equal, uh, uh, you know, to individuals. And uh, they're pretty happy about it. And this is going for a few years. And uh, once uh, uh, the this one year, one particular year, um, the yield was very, very less. You know, they were not able to uniformly distribute and uh, they couldn't actually figure out exactly what the problem and uh, they were wondering what went wrong. Um, so uh, being, you know, me being in the same uh, uh, village, seeing that tree on a day-to-day -day basis, they couldn't actually think beyond what could go wrong uh, with the entire process. And their entire year, uh, uh, you know, life um, uh, uh, survival actually uh, was revolving around this particular yield uh, every year. So they were wondering what actually could could have been uh, a problem and what went wrong. And one passerby was just walking in and was like, it was so much of a commotion there. And he kind of stood there and asked, what was the issue? Why is there so much of commotion here? Uh, then uh, people came up and then uh, said, uh, probably uh, they explained it to him in terms of what the problem that they had and uh, how it is going to affect their lives as well. And this guy was asking about how, how this is actually taken care of and what are the uh, you know uh, methods that they actually use to kind of uh, uh, you know groom this particular plant uh, tree and things like that. But it, 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 he understood that there is no uh, proper methods or metrics that are there to understand exactly the health of this particular tree or how it can actually uh, bring in better results the next year. Uh, they just uh, stood there, waited for the results, and every year they actually reaped it out. That's when the uh, person said, uh, the passerby kind of uh, brought in methods and implemented certain things, which helped them not only to maintain uh, the existing yield and also help them to have a more yield. When you have something really a goal, I think it's up to us to kind of set methods and practices so that grows, not actually deteriorate. So this is typically, I felt it's a uh, valid, um, you know, referencing to a manufacturing setup, especially because they are very, very highly metric driven. Uh, their methods are and process driven, and uh, their methods are very um, uh, interesting to see. And they stick to it. There is a process, and people stick to it. The discipline is pretty high there. So I felt that is the kind of an environment any goal setting practice would thrive and the planning mechanism would thrive. So uh, uh, that's the entire uh, journey that we're going to take for the next 20 minutes, how these kind of methods are going to uh, help us uh, bring that particular focus and also direction. So one uh, such thing is that Hoshan Canary as a methodology. Uh, right. This is actually, it's a Japanese uh, term and, you know, it is called as a planning methodology or policy definition or deployment kind of a methodology originated from Japan. I mean, uh, uh, that's when we kind of, that's the common ground uh, Dharma and I met when we actually uh, were uh, planning to implement OKRs. Uh, to brief on what Ocean Canary as a methodology does is that it helps organization to 
look at a long term goal and it also helps them to start uh, set a strategic objective create that alignment and also helps you kind of focus on what is your uh, execution plan and you know kind of uh, does a uh, continuous improvement and also lets you review and also adjust frequently and uh, most of you might be using it. I've seen more, wherever we have practiced uh, goal setting methodologies or OKRs, we have seen the first thing the plant head comes out with a, uh, the the ocean uh, model, and you know we start the um, you know black, whiteboard activity from there. So that's that's the only uh, essence that we have had uh, uh, when we are. So I know that this particular method is something that sticks on, and it actually has a success story to most of the um, you know manufacturing folks are out there and uh, what is the relativity what is the connection between uh, two different methodologies right i mean you would have already guessed that uh, they are already blended together um, would you want to add something uh, dharma no no it's going good to go on please thank you um, so uh, when you when you talk about alignment of goals, um, uh, that is something which uh, Hoshin Canary helps you, you know, give you a broader picture in terms of what is your org level goal, what could be a long term plan, be it a three year or a two year plan, whereas OKRs helps you to translate that into a very specific and a measurable objective that is typically uh, maybe a short term or maybe um, a short term uh, uh, like a quarterly or a half yearly goal that you said and when we bring this together there is a very clear vision in terms of what is that i'm going to do in the next two or three year uh, goal and what how is it actually getting executed and you know um, for a fact that the strategies are very easy i wouldn't say easy are done much more in a greater comfort because the understanding of leaders who actually does the strategy are much higher. But while you're implementing it, the execution plan is something has to be, uh, you know, kind of handheld because it goes to the last level of team member who's going to have the same level of understanding a leader had. So that's where the companies have a, a snap out and they have a, uh, they don't have really a great uh, execution plan in place. Even they had a great plan, they failed because they have not thought about the realistic um, hurdles that they might face. So uh, that's the integration that's going to help. Um, Hoshin would help you to look at a larger picture. OKRs will, uh, will help you to break it down into smaller goals. And it also helps you to bring that clarity and accountability. Where, uh, when uh, you have a larger goal, you can also break that down in OKRs and say that, who are all accountable for that particular uh, goal that gets executed. So that's something which is very, very important. The ownership is very important there. And uh, it also helps you to do a continuous measurement and tracking. Why is it important? As I was referring to the story, uh, we don't, uh, if when the going is good, we don't have a problem, right? I mean, when there is a problem, you need to have some kind of data in place to un understand exactly uh, what the problem statement, what, how did we fail, where did we fail, and what actually failed us. So these things actually help you to understand uh, what, how uh, you can correct the uh, pro uh, problem or the issues that we are having. That is greatly given through um, uh, OKRs when you're tracking quarterly. And Hoshin also helps you to track the KPIs. And I'll come to the KPI part later. How does it really work, it work together? And while you're... Um, Integrating these two uh, methods of measurement and tracking, you have a visibility of a long-term goal and uh, also have a, a visibility of a short-term execution plan and know exactly where we are traveling at, the, at any given point of time. So I think that's the fair idea about uh, OKRs in terms of how do you blend it. I also saw there there is a beautiful uh, link between Balance scorecards and OKRs also, which also work similarly in a very uh, uh, synergistic way between um, uh, OKRs get being an executional uh, framework and balance scorecard help you to measure the strategic alignment. So uh, when I speak to the leaders and when I speak to the uh, CEOs, I keep telling them uh, it's not a new met, uh, framework that's going to replace the existing one. 
rather it's going to sit on top of your existing frameworks or sometimes be travel along with your existing frameworks and give you a better results, be, give you a better visibility of what you're actually trying to track. So uh, I and also I think it's more um, with the multi generational workforce we have. It's a more eased uh, uh, kind of a uh, framework where it's very easy for every single person to understand. You don't really have a great need to have a great learning curve to understand how to implement and to having uh, sessions to make them understand how we are actually going to use this. So that that's going to be a very um, interesting and a very easy journey uh, uh, compared to the any other frameworks uh, is what I, I have seen. And how do you practically integrate them together, right? I mean, we spoke about how it works well together. So I would say um, when you start, we have a ocean canary already in pl uh, place. You might have already defined your long-term vision and strategic goal and already break broken down into an um, annual objective. That's where we start when it comes to OKRs. The annual objective becomes the starting point where we have actually taken it from Hoshin and then... Um, then we ensure that uh, the OKRs are created, are linked uh, to the uh, goals that we have already created and continuously track the quarterly and also uh, annual OSHIN so that we know exactly uh, by achieving these things, am I really actually achieving my OSHIN which has been planned? And also gives you a, OKRs being an agile and a very dynamic framework. It helps you to kind of continuously uh, review, do a course correction and adjust and uh, get a better performance insights also. So that's the practical steps, uh, you know, you can take to integrate OKRs to, uh, you know, performance management system. And uh, to give a very uh, brief example, right, the Hoshin is your long-term goal. Uh, let's say a uh, manufacturing company, uh, eco-friendly packing solution uh, in the industry, they want to become a leading manufacturer of eco-friendly packaging solution in the industry within five years. That's a long-term plan. When you're uh, breaking that into a goal, then it becomes a short-term plan, which is a three-year plan for you. And then which is further broken down into an annual plan, uh, which helps with, with the use of OKRs. And then break it down into objectives. Objectives are what statements and key results are how statements. So to achieve an objective, that's an outcome. It is easy to uh, it is easy to track through your key result. That's your uh, how. So if you're not achieving your uh, objective, then we should revisit on the key results that we have already written. I hope the example is clear. We can actually connect offline and discuss on it if you have more questions. I'm moving on to a, uh, another important and a, maybe a final metric that I wanted to discuss in this uh, session today. Um, uh, just a brief in terms of uh, how does uh, hex matrix sits on top of your X, uh, sorry, uh, OKRs and X matrix work together. So it helps you to blend between your mission and vision, strategy goal, company objective, department and team and individual OKRs. That is a blend that we will bring uh, in. This is a uh, typical X matrix repre representation for you to understand how it works. And um, in the last or probably I would say a very important matrix that we quite often uh, come across, everyone, not only manufacturing, every one of us start, uh, start our, you know, continuously track KPIs. Uh, OKRs are nothing but, um, uh, you know, what, what are we trying to do and how are we going to achieve the progress. Whereas KPIs are very specific and business as usual metrics, right? Where, where am I currently? Uh, I'll say, for example, that if I'm going to travel somewhere, you know, the dashboard of your car is going to give you the health metric. That is your business as, as usual metrics. If I have to reach somewhere at 10 a.m., I should be having some amount of petrol in my car, right? So, and what is the average speed in which I'm driving? These things are your health metrics that can be seen in your dashboard. So that is at any given point of time should be tracked to understand the better results. So how do you really uh, integrate both of this together? Uh, we actually bring uh, OKRs and KPIs together in a very um, uh, beautiful way. And it, it need not replace, uh, KPIs cannot be replaced and you know, OKRs will be added instead of KPIs. 
because both are, both serves a different purpose. Uh, whereas OKR helps you to understand your aspirational goals or help you to drive the KPIs that you are using. Uh, say, for example, that you have a sales number which is going month on month. Um, you're making some X dollars that you're making every month. And um, you're seeing there is a dip in your sales for the quarter. And that's when your OKR comes in place to help you to kind of, um, you know, increase your revenue. And what are the actions are you taking to increase that results? Uh, these aspirations becomes your OKRs. But nevertheless, you would be tracking the KPIs continuously to understand at any given point of time, where are we? So you know, this gives you a very holistic picture on where am I currently and where am I aspiring to go? And um, am I on the right track? Would I actually reach where I want to go if this is what is going to be my current progress? And uh, KPS helps you to understand a continuous improvement plan also because if there is a month on month when you're tracking KPIs, you understand where what is going wrong and where is the what are the metrics that is actually giving uh, uh, needs improvement and helps you to kind of create that engagement. Um, because you know, my KPIs are also uh, working along with OKR, which contributes directly to the company goals. There is a sense of accomplishment, the sense of empowerment is there. So it is great that uh, you'll be able to bring in that kind of employee engagement. And to have, have a, a few examples of OKRs or KPIs uh, uh, and KPIs in manufacturing, when you talk about increasing the production efficiency, right, uh, by 15% or something, that's what we call it as a uh, description of an OKR. When you're talking about measuring some specific metrics, units produced per hour, machine utilization rate, and so on and so forth are the KPIs that you would be continuously measuring to ensure that the production efficiency is also increased. Do you want to add something there, my here? No, I mean, I want this. Uh, so when you talk about the quality control OKR, uh, uh, when you talk about quality control, you know, the defects reduction would be one of your aspirational metrics, but you need to know exactly what is your current def defects and what is the kind of compliance that you are getting from your customers. That becomes your KPI. And when you're talking about supply chain as a, uh, a, a role and you know, you're know you talking about an on-time delivery, increasing or improving on-time delivery becomes an aspirational metric and a continuous metric, uh, which is an objective that you can write over your team. And when you're talking about uh, improving what is your current delivery lead time? Uh, what is your on-time delivery percentage currently? Are some KPIs that you might want to measure to uh, understand or increase the uh, objectives or the goals set for the uh, departments? So that's the fair uh, idea about um, you know, OKRs and uh, KPIs and pushing. And OKRs works beautifully well with the KPIs and also the Hoshin method. And it becomes one of the framework and it blends, you know, um, you know, very beautifully and shows you that visualization in terms of where we are currently and what what where we are progressing, and how would we actually even reach where we are actually aspiring to reach. And uh, one thing, few things that you want, might want to keep on uh, uh, on top of your mind while implementing that uh, your expectations, which are set, should be very very clear. You can't have a vague expectation or uh, the statements are vague or ambiguous. So that's going to not get, get the results that you want to have. And then um, uh, if you do not uh, reside or be in the blame culture, nothing like that. If you are in, probably that has to, that will be one of the biggest trap that you will fall in. So you need to watch out for that. And uh, I, since the metrics are very clear, the uh, objectives are very clear, I think that may not be a, a, a requirement to do a micromanagement because we know exactly at any given point of time where we are traveling. So with that, uh, we can actually, uh, if you start doing micromanagement, probably we will actually miss out on the long-term goal. And then uh, you should also continuously do a feedback mechanism. Otherwise, uh, giving and taking feedback would be, uh, people will be surprised if you tell them at the end of the quarter or end of the year saying that you could have done this better, where you had an opportunity to tell them continuously also. So that is something that we need to watch out for. 
and uh, uh, do not over emphasis on an individual performance model there are uh, it would be an outcome of it uh, end of the day but still we're looking at a uh, larger uh, goals here uh, uh, individual performance any which way would be derived from it but it may, may not be the only method to um, uh, arrive on a performance there are a lot more other parameters that comes around that and uh, yes there is going to be a typical resistance uh, but I think uh, a kind of a manufacturing setup where there is a process driven and we we are all tuned to do something in a very uh, methodical way. I think getting to a change may take time, but it would actually, since they are more practiced to you know kind of processes and uh, uh, methods, I think it is much more easier for uh, manufacturing culture to actually take this on. And uh, before uh, we wind up, probably I would like to invite you all uh, to a community, which is our goals accomplished community, where we discuss these kind of things uh, on day to day basis and you know, kind of ask our doubts and clarify our, uh, um, you know, um, you know, any doubts that we have in a workplace or on the goal setting methods. And that's where we are, most of us are and most of the time. So you can reach out uh, to us in Goals Accomplished. We will also let you know in terms of uh, what is the, uh, we will send you an email to join the community. You can also block us, uh, a blocker time if you want to discuss about goal setting and if you want to discuss about implementing OKRs uh, in your company, please feel free to do a one-on-one uh, with us. You can block a calendar through our website link, which will also be shared uh, through an email post this call. Uh, this session would be there in our website and also there is a podcast which is there available. We will share those details as well. We look forward to having you in the upcoming uh, webinars as well. So uh, happy having you all here. and um, Thank you very much. Have a great evening.